Hey, Dev Nation's book devs. I hope you're having a great day. Today, we are doing our overrated, underrated, where I'm going to go ahead and rate several different popular nonfiction books and let you know my thoughts on whether I think it's overrated, underrated, as well as why. And before we start, I just want to preface with these are my own thoughts, my own opinions. I'm not trying to cramp on anybody's style in terms of, you know, books that they read. Just because I love chocolate doesn't necessarily mean that you love chocolate, right? Same idea with books. Everybody just connects with books differently and different types of books connect with different types of people. So, you know, again, my own thoughts, my own opinions. If I dislike a book, you might love it and vice versa. It's cool. As long as we can get along and respect everybody's own opinions and thoughts, we're cool with it. I'm going to make sure to just give my honest thoughts about the books and my experiences with them. So let's get into it. First book we have who Moved My Cheese by Dr. Spencer Johnson. I would say this book is properly rated. I think for the time commitment that it requires, it's a fairly short read. It's about, it's not even a hundred pages. So you could probably finish this book in about an hour, maybe two. For the time commitment and you still get value out of the book, I would say it's properly rated. It's a quick, easy read, but you still get great value out of the book. You know, anticipate change, adapt to change quickly. Really just learning about how to have an open mind. I think it's a really good beginning book in order to get started into reading and learn more about uh, ha developing a more open mindset. So I think properly rated. Next book on the list, I know there's going to be some people say absolutely overrated or absolutely underrated. Let me know your thoughts because I know this is going to be a more controversial book, but The 48 Laws of Power, already a very controversial book, whether you're a fan of it, whether you're a critique of it, that's fine. Whatever your thoughts, I think this book is actually properly rated. It is Robert Greene's most sought after book, right? The, his most popular book. But I also think that The 48 Laws of Power has so many different chapters and ideas and the writing style of Robert Greene is just quite phenomenal that I think every time you read through the book, every time you just even go through a chapter, I think there's still new information that you can take from the book and incorporate into your own life or at least think about and, and really start reflecting on. And so I think a book like that, even though because it gets so much praise, but because it also has so much value every time you you come anew to this book and just read it again and again, I think there's always new value you can get out of the book. So I would have to say 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene, properly rated. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you think it's if, if it's overrated or underrated. Next book we have is Blink by Malcolm Gladwell, The Power of Thinking Without Thinking. Now, I think this book is really good. Um, I really enjoyed it. It's one of the first books I picked up and started developing my reading habits. Now, this one, Blink, Power of Thinking Without Thinking, I would say underrated. I don't really hear too many people talking about Blink necessarily. Um, and I still think it has a lot of value that, pe that readers can get away that not many people are talking about. So I would say Blink still underrated. Next book on the list is The 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. This book, I'll have to say overrated. I think this book could have been chalked up into perhaps a blog post or just a quick YouTube video. Pretty much the idea is, hey, any dream you got, any idea you've got, just 10X it, right? Make it as big as you can, make it as as big and superb as you can and, and just go after it, tackle it no matter what. And I think it's a great mindset to have. It really works for Grant Cardone. I'm happy for him. But I don't think he needed to make an entire book out of it just discussing, hey, 10x every every idea, every thought you have, and just go for it, right? That's pretty much the gist of the book. Um, but again, everybody has their own styles. But I just think it's one of those that could have just been chalked up to perhaps a YouTube video or a blog post and then just left it at that. So overall, I would say overrated. Next one up, we have The 5 a.m. Club by Robin Sharma. Own your morning, elevate your life. This book, I would also say overrated just because I think the story is nice and I don't mind the writing. It's fine. I do enjoy the story and I don't, you know, the, the writing is fine, but I think it also could have been chalked up to pretty much. I think the key takeaway about the book is the 5 a.m. club and more specifically the 20, 20, 20 formula. I think that was probably the biggest lesson I took out of the book. And, you know, that's just all on one page right there. Pretty much the biggest takeaway I got out of the book, and that's on page 206, is take the first hour of your morning 
and take 20 minutes to work out, you know, get active, take another 20 minutes to go ahead and reflect, whether that's yoga or journaling or whatever, and then take another 20 minutes to expand or, or learn, whether that's through podcasts, whether that's through reading books. And I think if you just consistently do that, that's really the biggest lesson out of the book, having consistently good habits and setting yourself up so that you get those habits done early in the morning, early in the day, so you can enjoy the rest of the day. So I think that's really the big takeaway of the book and he creates an entire story out of that one lesson, that one idea that I honestly think could be chalked up again in another blog or just in a nice 15, 20 minutes of, hey, this is how you go ahead and really own your morning and elevate your life without having to write an entire book. I think the biggest lesson was really have that 20, 20, 20 formula of 20 minutes of working out, 20 minutes of journaling and reflecting and then another 20 minutes of of expanding your mind and learning. The 5 a.m. Club by Robin Sharma, I think overrated. Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. That's a tough one. Hmm. I would say properly rated at the moment. So reason being, it still has, it's still a really great story and and it has really great lessons that people can take from the book. But it also has a lot of fans behind it or a lot of haters on the book as well, right? So, but I think properly rated overall because of the many lessons and stories that it teaches you along the way. So I would have to say properly rated for this book. Again, let me know what you think. Maybe you think it's overrated. Maybe you think it's underrated. This has gotten so many people into reading books and picking up books. It's a really great story. So I would have to say properly rated. Let me know. Next book we have is The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. A Practical Guide to Personal Freedom. I personally love this book, but my gut instinct said overrated. And I'm trying to think why. I think it was a bit repetitive. I really enjoyed the lessons out of the book, but I think it just it also started getting a bit repetitive throughout each section. And I think it could have been just a bit more concise, even though it is a very short and quick, easy read. I really enjoyed it, especially the first time I read through it. I think it really helped me in terms of tackling these four agreements. And I'll just quickly go through it. The four agreements are be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions and always do your best. And I think my favorite lesson from the book was always do your best as well as don't make assumptions. Those are my two favorite agreements. Let me know if you have a favorite agreement, but I would say honestly a bit overrated and I think it could have been a little more concise but overall again still a really great read so many lessons to take out of it these are, these are just my own thoughts let me know if you disagree I know I'm probably gonna get a lot of heat for it but four agreements by the one you get is a bit overrated still love the ideas and love the lessons next up we have atomic habits by James Clear an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones Now, believe it or not, I'm going to have to go with underrated for Atomic Habits. Reason I say that is I think it's a really great book for anybody who is completely new to reading. Now, if you've been reading the last 10 years, I would not recommend this book. Yes, I would absolutely say overrated, but I'm still sticking with my underrated. It's just gut feeling. Reason being, again, because I think it's a really great book for anybody who is completely new to reading, especially nonfiction books, and wants to figure out sort of the science behind how to develop new habits without getting too technical. I think James Clear does great work with in terms of discussing bits and pieces of the science, as well as specific actionables that you can utilize as you're reading the book in order to incorporate new habits into your own life like reading books or, you know, a new food habit, eating habit, right? Uh, Workout habits, whatever it might be. I think he does a great job at combining both the science of building new habits as well as actionables, key actions that you can incorporate as you're reading the book so you can start changing your own day-to-day actions, your own day-to-day choices. So I think he does a good mixture of the two and that's why I would say overall, the book is underrated. Next book we got is Dr. Jordan B. Peterson's 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos. I would say this, you know, I was kind of stuck between either overrated or properly rated. I would have to say properly rated. Now, I do also want to note that I am a big fan of Dr. Jordan B. Peterson, but reason I was sort of between properly rated or overrated, I think he gets a lot of either, either you love him or you hate him, but I think there's also a lot of people who because they just hear his name and it's it can be a um and i think you know his name and just like the peterson family can be perhaps seen as controversial right i think there's a lot of people who buy the book just to sort of like 
crap on it, even though it's still a really great book. Um, then again, you can make the argument that it's underrated, right? Anyways, gut feeling is I think it's properly rated. I think, you know, millions of copies have sold. I think the value that Dr. Jordan B. Peterson provides in, in his books are really good. Um, and for me personally, I really enjoyed each chapter. His writing style, you know, I mean, he's a great writer. He's a great author. Just, you know, I'm a bit slow. So for me, it's a bit difficult sometimes, especially when I'm, I've already had a long day and then I go to read maybe a chapter that I want to revisit. I think it can be a difficult read. Again, that could just be my own dummy brain. But overall, I would have to say properly rated. It's a lot of value in one book, even in, in one chapter, in one page. He will discuss two, three different ideas and then find a way to sort of weave them together in some sense like he'll talk about one idea then a second and a third and then he ties all of them like sort of towards the end of the chapter and so really cool it can be a little confusing if, if you're not used to his writing so a lot of value that he provides but also it's very well spoken of his, his books you know a lot of people know about his books his work and the family as well so absolutely i'm a fan so i i'm kind of also leaning maybe towards underrated as well but I'm all over the spectrum, so I have to go with properly rated. Let me know if you think overrated, underrated. We'd love to hear your thoughts and especially what you think about the book. But personally, it's one of my favorite books. That's why it's really tough to judge this one objectively for me. And so I'm trying to be a little more stern with myself of just the gut feeling. But um, so properly rated for 12 Rules for Life. And the last book we have is The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. How Little Things Can Make a Big Difference. I would say properly rated. Uh, it's a good book. It's not like an amazing book. I still love the ideas in this book. And as I mentioned earlier, Malcolm Gladwell was one of the first authors I, I picked up in terms of uh, reading nonfiction books. But I also don't hear it as commonly spoken of. Um, I know Malcolm Gladwell is fairly well known, but I don't know if the tipping point is. I know the 10,000 hour rule is a big one for him, but because it's not as well known or not even not well known, it's not as commonly discussed nowadays. I would overall say that The Tipping Point is properly rated. Personally, I really enjoy Malcolm Gladwell's writing style, but I also don't hear it being spoken of enough in terms of for it to get overrated. I, I don't see too many people discussing The Tipping Point that much. Uh, some of his other books, he has like the 10,000 hour rule. I would probably say a bit overrated, but in terms of this one, The Tipping Point, I would have to say properly rated. Very famous, but also has a lot of great different ideas throughout the book and different lessons that you can take from the book. So I would say properly rated. All right, guys. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please let me know down below whether you agree, disagree with some of my thoughts. We'd love to hear from you guys. It's really tough to do. This is all just first instinct. I didn't really put too much thought into it. It's just sort of a gut thing, you know, properly rated, overly rated or underrated. So let me know your guys' thoughts if you agree, disagree, what books you thought were overrated or underrated, and why. If you guys want to see more episodes like this, feel free to comment down below any specific books, any specific ideas. You know, I'm more than happy to discuss whether I think it's overrated, underrated. I hope you guys enjoy it. Remember, today's a great day to have a great day. So have a great day, and thanks for watching.